This is gonna be so much to edit because I keep forgetting things and I keep having to go back and repeat things. Oh! Hey y'all, uh, it's Jerrica. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about some of the different career paths that you can take as an esthetician. The esthetician industry has grown exponentially over the past couple years and it's only gonna get bigger. So I just wanted to come on here and give you guys a video talking about some of the different jobs that you can get after esthetician school. The first one I'm gonna jump into is basically being a salon or spa esthetician. This is the basic esthetician that I feel like everyone knows like this is like the base level job working in a spa or a salon offering different facial services and facial treatments in this job you're typically working in the spa setting you have a treatment room and you're just administering facials with whatever product line of your choice or whatever product line your salon uses this is where you offer facials such as hydrating facials clarifying facials you may offer certain skin services like dermaplaning um hydrofacials chemical peels dermabrasion and things of that nature this is the job i feel like people typically think of whenever you mention to them that you're an esthetician branching off from that you can kind of move over to the medical aesthetics industry um which is when you get more into things like laser like laser for scar removal and laser for hair removal you can also um do microneedling if you are certified in that but there's one thing that i feel like people think that we can do that we actually cannot which is botox and filler that is even though it's something that's more aesthetic and not really like a medical treatment that is something that only medical professionals can do um even whenever you're working in a med spa and you have a medical director or you're working under a physician the only things that you still are able to do are the facial and skin treatments laser and things like microneedling but we are not allowed to administer botox and filler that is something that you have to go to um medical school for become a rn a lpn things of that nature so just keep that in mind if that's something that you want to pursue after aesthetic school um you're gonna have to move over to like the medical field moving away from the typical spa setting you get more into the concentrated salons that focus on things like hair removal or lashes Starting with hair removal, you can also get a job as a hair removal specialist doing waxing for the face, the body, and also doing sugar waxing. So sugaring is a different type of hair removal. You have to be um, specifically trained um, outside of esthetician school if your school does not offer a training program for sugaring. But in the esthetician school, you do learn the basics of soft wax and hard wax to learn how to do hair removal. Moving on, another field that has been growing rapidly is the lash industry. Um, if you know me personally or you follow me off of youtube and you follow me on instagram you probably know that i'm a lash artist i will make a separate video probably going into the ins and outs of becoming a lash artist and just tips for lash artists starting out in general but the under the umbrella of lashing can come other things as well so aside from the lash extensions you may also offer services like lash lifting a lash perm and tinting also brow services such as brow tinting brow henna threading and brow waxing branching off from the brows you may also decide that you want to learn how to do microblading and becoming a microblading artist um i know that there are two different methods that brow artists have been using there's microblading and micro shading um i don't know the specifics of the two different services i don't know much about what makes them different but um i think that micro shading is more of um shading in the 
brow to give more of a fuller and bolder look whereas microblading is just strictly filling in hair like strokes to give more of a natural brow um if you're a brow artist comment down below and tell us what the difference is like from your professional standpoint but i am not a licensed or certified um microblading artist that's something that i have never done or been introduced to so i don't know all the ins and outs of it but i think that that is the difference between the two but you can move on to microblading if brows are kind of your thing um in the state of georgia i believe after you've been to aesthetic school and passed state board and became an esthetician you um just have to work in a salon or spa that has um like a license for that city or that state to do tattooing i believe that's how it works for microblade artists um if you know and i'm wrong definitely correct me so we can have the right information just leave a comment down below and moving past some of the services that you can offer another career path that you can take after esthetician school is to become an aesthetics instructor if you think that you know you're a really good teacher and you're really thorough and you want to help girls um grow and learn in the aesthetics industry you could become an instructor I believe that there are continued education courses that you have to take after you pass state board to become an actual esthetician and then you can go on to take state board for um, becoming an instructor so yeah. Another one that I feel like people don't really mention is um, working in like the makeup industry um, as well. A lot of people that are makeup artists they go to esthetician school to learn more about the skin, learn more about color theory and things of the sort. But most um, makeup artists that I know, they are self-taught. They have taught themselves everything that they know and they're absolutely amazing. But if you want to um, grow and like expand your business and be able to offer other services and other tips to your clients, um, going to esthetician school if you're an MUA is a really good move. Also, you're able to work at um, retail stores and different makeup brands such as Ulta, Sephora, um, a makeup counter such as Clinique, Estee Lauder, Lancome. Um, don't get me wrong, you can work at a makeup counter without having an esthetician license. Working at Ulta was the first job I ever had. I had never had any other work experience. It was the first job I got when um, I went to college. So you can work at Ulta or Sephora or a makeup counter without having an esthetician license, but it is also a career that you can pursue after esthetician school if you want to further your career in a cosmetic industry um you can also become like a counter manager or you can become a designated um vendor for a specific brand um and that's just something that you could look into after you finish esthetician school just because you have the knowledge on certain makeup products and you have um more knowledge about the skin all right y'all that pretty much sums up this video i hope it was helpful i hope if you guys are going to esthetician school that this gave you some insight into the jobs and careers that are going to be available to you after you become licensed and if you enjoy this video make sure you give me a thumbs up leave me a comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you aren't subscribed already so you don't miss out on any future uploads and i will see you guys in my next one bye i've been watching you i